AT&T Fiber presents a straightforward moment. Game on, baby. This looks great. Yeah, streaming is amazing with AT&T Fiber. Must be nice being a gagillionaire. Yup, and the straightforward pricing has made me want to be straightforward with you. I'd much rather stream ice dancing. Is that Alma Hansen and Bjorn Anders? Oh, uh, straightforward is better. No equipment fees, no data caps, no price increase at 12 months. Live like a gagillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. Hello and welcome to mini episode 185 of Real Life Ghost Stories and I have three spooky stories for you today and the last story comes from May the 10th 2022 and story number one comes from Sean. I guess I'd call myself a sceptical believer. I don't hear something creak in the house and say shit it's a ghost. But I also don't think we know everything there is to know so yeah fuck it why not ghosts. As far as personal experiences I've had a few but nothing like a brick flying through a basement, shout out Zach, it's a demon Bagans, or anything like that. My first one was in 2014. I was 24 and living in a former funeral home that had been converted into a multi-family residence. I was renting the bottom floor, and my landlord lived upstairs with his wife and seven-year-old daughter who enjoyed playing Frosty the Snowman on her violin for three hours a day, about as well as a seven-year-old should be expected to. One morning, while nursing a hangover, I was lying on the couch trying to piece together what or whom I had gotten into the preceding evening. As I laid there on my couch that doubled as a bed, yeah, real dirtbag phase, I know, I heard a loud sigh in my ear and felt an ever so slight breeze accompany it. It sounded like a disembodied voice had just been told a dad joke and was reacting to it. How does a ghost unlock a door? A spooky... I laid there frozen and tried to process what I had heard. I lived alone, the TV was off, landlord, his wife and Vivaldi Jr. up there were not home. So what the hell was it? I must have stayed on that couch for a solid hour after, trying to wrap my head around it. I then came to accept that it was probably a former customer of the funeral home that had become my apartment, hanging out with me. Perhaps they were displeased with my hungover state. Regardless, I didn't experience anything else there, which, if ghosts really are a thing, is pretty remarkable, given the fact that I lived in the spiritual equivalent of a train station. The second incident was more recent. It was 2020, and while the whole world was getting sick and ordering every meal from Grubhub and Instacart, yours truly was holed up in his apartment. Now, a 31-year-old man with a dog I was hanging out watching reruns of Paranormal Lockdown when I decided to give the Ghost Radar smartphone app a whirl just for shits and giggles. For the unaware, it's a fairly janky app that gives rather dubious results, but it apparently scans some sort of frequencies to detect energies present in the room and displays words beneath a radar screen that shows dots, presumably representing spirits. Oddly as I'm writing this, I am getting chills. I loaded the app up and let it sit. For a few moments, there was nothing. I was lying on the couch, again, but this time I had an actual bed to sleep in like a big boy, and I called out, Is anyone here? Nothing. I asked the question again. A dot appeared on the radar screen as well as a random word. I forgot what exactly. A chill ran down my spine. At this point, I figured the app was messing with me, so before I shut it down, I decided to try one last experiment. How many fingers am I holding up? I asked, holding up three. Then came the answer. Three. Holy shit, I yelled. I wasn't scared, I was stunned. I wish I'd been recording it. My dog, who had been sitting at my feet, suddenly looked up and woofed at a corner of the room, which was the same direction as the dot on the screen. I shut the app off and said a prayer for protection. Note, I'm pretty irreligious, but I figured it was a good time to ask a favour from the big guy. I haven't experienced anything paranormal since. So are ghosts real? I don't know. I think it would take me seeing something crazy to make me actually believe it. 
And maybe I don't want to because that opens up an enormous can of worms. I am interested in ghosts, but since the recent death of a girl I dated a few months ago, I've made a point to focus on enjoying life. After all, we'll all find out if they are real someday, but might as well not rush it. So part of the reason why I don't really drink is because I get the worst hangovers you can imagine. So if you think about the worst hangover you've ever had, multiply it by a million and I can tell you you're not even close. The hangovers and me do not mix. I get very ill. I get very emotional. It's never it's never a good time when I'm hungover. So I can imagine that if I was hungover and a ghost sighed in my ear, I would perceive that to be judgmental. And it would be the fucking final straw for me. That would be it. That would be that would be my 13th reason, as the kids say these days. I, I just wouldn't be able for it. I'd be like, you know what? I'm hungover and I can't deal with the paranormal right now. I can't deal with the normal. I can't deal with life. Never mind the paranormal. I do think as well there is nothing more stressful than living in the vicinity of a child learning a musical instrument. Because in the beginning, it's like, oh, isn't that really sweet? Like, that's lovely. They're trying to learn how to play the violin or whatever it is and then you're like I've heard twinkle twinkle badly 14 times today already it's not good I mean it's lovely for a child to learn an instrument of course it is but it's not good I'm not entirely convinced either that funeral homes are kind of going to be as haunted as we think they are I think they freak people out because they hold dead bodies right which is you know it's a bit freaky I get it but I just think if 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 there's an afterlife if ghosts exist or whatever whatever needs to have happened will have happened already that's just my opinion. I just don't think they're going to be that haunted. Would I like to be in one overnight if there was like bodies there and stuff? No, probably not. I wouldn't be as brave then. But I just don't think that I would think that it was majorly haunted. And as for those apps, I've never used one. At least I don't think I have. Am I kind of tempted to? Yes, but I also do think they're like nonsense. You know what I mean? I think they're just apps that throw out random words. But this would freak me out as well. Because how many fingers am I holding up specifically and then the answer coming three? That's really, that's a really specific answer. And then the dog barking at the corner where the dot was on the radar. No, I'd be, I would be freaked out by that too. I don't know if it would like prove to me that ghosts were real or whatever, but I, I, it would still freak me out. And story number two comes from Danielle. I love hearing all of the spooky and dark ghost stories, but my story is a happy one. Although I suppose it doesn't start out that way. When I was 16, my parents and I took a vacation over my Christmas break from school to Branson, Missouri. A classic choice for our family. We've been going there for as long as I can remember. Usually our visits take place in the summer when we can visit the lake, outdoor shopping centres and amusement parks. Over this winter trip, we'd spent a lot of time in our hotel room playing games. Then we decided to take one of the cave tours since it was one of the few things around town we hadn't done before. Now, I know what you're thinking. This story is about mining ghosts. Unfortunately, no. We didn't even make it to the caves. While we were waiting for our tour to begin, my dad suffered a major heart attack. He passed away a few days later in the hospital and it was one of the longest weeks of my life. Once my mom and I finally returned home and were trying to settle into our new lives, I noticed one of the lights in our living room had gone out. But the ceilings were too high to change it without a ladder, so I figured I could change it later. After a few days, the light had come back on on its own. Over the next few weeks, this kept happening with this one light. I decided to mention it to my mom, and I asked if she thought maybe it was my dad saying hello. She agreed that it was. In the time since he passed... She had been running errands with my grandpa and she told me how the interior overhead lights in the car had been fading on and off while they were driving. She thought it was my dad too. Over the next year or so this happened more often. Different lights in our house. Street lamps as I was driving. It still happens on occasion and every time a warmth washes over me as I think of him smile and say hi dad. But that's not the only way he comes to me. Not long after his passing, I had a very vivid dream that I had gone to visit him in a little white house placed on top of a large red rock, like you would see in Arizona, another of my parents' favourite vacation spots. The rock was so high up in the sky that you couldn't see the ground, just other tall rocks like it. When he greeted me at the door, he gave me the biggest, tightest hug, and once we let go, 
I realised that he had a bandage over his heart. All healed. I have also had countless dreams of being at parties or dinners with tons of people and spotting him from across the room. Running to him, crying happy tears, somehow knowing that it's been such a long time since I've seen him. Like he's been on a long vacation and I want to catch him up on everything in my life and hear how he's doing. Now you might think that it's a coincidence that I have run into flickering street lamps that my homes might all have faulty wires or dying bulbs and that the dreams are just created by my own imagination and desires. Maybe that is all true. But I choose to believe that my dad is checking in on me, letting me know that he is there for me. I have believed that for 12 years and I will continue to believe it. But even if not, I would be happy to have life's little coincidences and my subconscious bring me those moments of joy and peace with my dad. First of all, I'm really sorry that happened to you and your mom. That is just an awful thing to have to go through. An awful thing to have to witness and then have to go through it and then try and go home and kind of restart your different life. It's just awful and I'm really sorry that that happened to you. And I think after somebody dies, whatever you find solace and comfort in is so important and it is legitimate and it is true for you if that is what you find solace and comfort in. And we don't know anything about the afterlife. We can't know anything about the afterlife. We can speculate. You can have your own beliefs about it, but we don't objectively know anything about what happens after you die, really, spiritually, you know. So maybe it is a case that your dad That was how he found his way to communicate. He knew it was kind of a soft, non-scary way to be able to communicate with you and your mom. And then when he realised, oh, they've recognised that it's me, maybe he started doing it more. And if that brings you comfort, then that is what matters. And as for the dreams, like we get so many stories about loved ones visiting people in their dreams that sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I think maybe there is something to that, you know. Maybe that is their way of, again, not being really intrusive but making themselves known to you and having that and having that communication that connection with you again today's episode is brought to you by hello fresh welcome back everyone so good to see you all back again this week it is such a shame that chupacabra couldn't make it but given the reports this week that he is in fact a dog perhaps Monsters Anonymous is not the best place for him. Now today, we're going to recap on what we learned last week, which was... <coughs> That's right! Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. You guys were really paying attention. So how can we use Hello Fresh as a great alternative to hunting and consuming humans? You've all got New Year's goals... And HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and skip that eternal rat race of hunting humans and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your cave without all of the worry of being caught on camera and put in a paranormal YouTube compilation. Okay, okay, Mothman. Mothman. I appreciate your contribution, but remember last week, we talked about using our indoor voices or indoor echolocation. You are very loud in this small space. Also, please keep the death prophecies to the end of the session as it upsets the other entities. Thank you. Let's continue. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options that you're looking for to help you achieve those goals. Choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins or adding protein that isn't human to a veggie dish. Also, I'd like to think I wasn't this patronising as a teacher, but I probably was. And I can tell you that I have received a whopping 89 HelloFresh boxes thus far, and I love it. Helps me to eat better, save money, limit my food waste, etc. Okay, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. I love that you are trying really hard, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you to remove my leg from your mouth, okay? Some people are into it, not me. 
why don't you use that energy to go to HelloFresh.com slash Real Life Ghost Stories 22 and use code Real Life Ghost Stories 22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. Now, everybody say it with me. That's HelloFresh.com slash Real Life Ghost Stories and use code Real Life Ghost Stories 22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. And story number three comes from Michael. I have a creepy story for you that happened to me when I was 17. It has been a while, I'm 33 now, but I still remember it vividly. It's important to note that I don't believe in ghosts, but at the same time, I'm terrified by the possibility that they could be real. My grandma died in the house that I was born in. She was suffering from cancer and my mom and my granddad were both taking care of her. On the day she gave in to the terrible illness that cancer is, I came over with my younger sister. We didn't want our mom and our granddad to stay at the house where the memory of grandma was still so fresh. We spent the day cleaning up, remembering grandma and giving each other comfort. When the night finally settled, my granddad went to his bed downstairs and me, my mom and my sister went to one of the upstairs bedrooms. I made the bed for them and then made a makeshift bed for myself on the floor. We spent some time talking while lying in our beds and finally we decided to call it a day. And then, when we killed the lights, we heard the noise of somebody touching the doorknob. I went down very gently, and the door opened. It was dark in the corridor behind. My granddad was terrified of the dark ever since he was a kid. His bastard father had given him away to serve as a sort of a farmhand, as he couldn't support his entire family. My granddad had to sleep in the dark barn with the farm animals. Ever since then, whenever he had to walk somewhere at night, he switched all the lights on. And I can't really blame him. So it couldn't have been my granddad that opened that door. Even though I felt like something wasn't right, I asked if it was him and to come inside. There was no reply. And after a few seconds, the door closed very gently and the doorknob came back up. I don't know how I managed to muster the courage, but I jumped from my bed and into the corridor. There was no movement, no sound, nothing and nobody. The three of us who were in the bedroom freaked the fuck out. We were, and still are, certain that it was Grandma that came to us to say goodbye. The next morning, we asked if Grandpa was upstairs by any chance, but he had taken a sleeping tablet and wasn't awake until the morning. And again, we have another story of a loved one coming to check on people after they have passed. In my head, I could imagine the grandmother opening the door, looking in to see if they're okay, checking on them, and then trying to leave quietly and close the door again. And I hope that people listening can take solace from these stories of loved ones coming back. It doesn't necessarily mean that it has to happen to you. I often get emails from people who are like, how come my loved one hasn't come back to me if, if everybody else's has? And I don't really think that's how it works. But I think that there is a comfort to be had, even if you haven't experienced something similar, that it can happen, that it does happen to people. And maybe some people might look at these stories and think, OK, that's enough. It's enough that I know that there might be something more. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Sean, Danielle and Michael for sending in your stories. Remember, the last story came from May the 10th, 2022. If you would like to send in your own story, you can do so by sending it to Podcast at gmail.com. If you would like to know anything about the podcast, you can check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you are desperate for extra content, you can sign up to patreon.com forward slash real life ghost stories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every main and mini episode completely ad free. And on that note, I shall see you next time.
AT&T Fiber presents a straightforward moment. Game on, baby. This looks great. Yeah, streaming is amazing with AT&T Fiber. Must be nice being a gagillionaire. Yup, and the straightforward pricing has made me want to be straightforward with you. I'd much rather stream ice dancing. Is that Alma Hansen and Bjorn Anders? Uh. Straightforward is better. No equipment fees, no data caps, no price increase at 12 months. Live like a gagillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details.